Hi everyone, thanks for joining another episode of the Google Ads Developer Series on Authentication. I'm Laura and I'm a Developer Relations Engineer on the Google Ads API. In this episode, we'll walk through the web application flow for setting up OAuth credentials for Google Ads API access using one of our client libraries. If you're interested in using the desktop application flow, my colleague Devin put together an episode for you. The desktop flow requires authorization to be completed on the local machine, whereas the web flow allows authorization to be completed on Google's authorization server. In previous episodes, we've given an overview of OAuth and the different credentials needed to connect to the API. We've shown how to set up a client ID and client secret for a Google Cloud project through the Google Cloud Console, and we've used the OAuth playground to generate refresh and access tokens for our application. For this episode, you'll want to make sure you've created a cloud project and use that to generate a client ID and client secret. So check out those other episodes or our developer documentation if you need help generating these values. You can find those videos linked in the description. We'll be using the Python client library for this demo, but the steps will be more or less the same regardless of which client library you choose. The example script will be in the authentication subdirectory of the examples directory of our client library. So we'll go ahead and open that in our IDE just for reference. I mentioned we'll need a client ID and client secret for this, so I'm going to start by going to the cloud project that I created, which is where I can find those credentials that I'd previously generated. While we're there, we'll also want to make sure that localhost 8080 is added as an authorized redirect URI, since this is where the script tells the auth server to send us after we allow the authorization request. Within my cloud project, I'll head to the APIs and Services section, and then Credentials, where I can find my client ID and client secret. I'll then download the JSON file for those credentials, and note the path where it's downloaded to, since we'll need to provide that path in order to run our web app flow example. For the sake of this demo, I've already downloaded the file and moved it to my home directory. And now I need to add localhost as a redirect URI. So I'll click into the name of the credential set I created. Under authorized redirect URIs, click add URI and put localhost 8080 here. This might vary slightly depending on the client library you're using, so make sure to confirm with your library's example. I'll click Save, and then we can go back to our script. Now that we have localhost listed as a redirect URI, and we've downloaded and saved our client ID and client secret into a specific directory, we can run the Webflow script. So that's python examples slash authentication slash authenticate in web application. And this example takes one argument, which is client secrets path. And again, that's the path to the JSON file containing our client ID and client secret, which we noted down earlier. So we'll go ahead and run that. And it's outputting a URL, which it tells us to paste into the browser. So we'll follow that URL. And once we do that, it asks us to authenticate using one of our Google accounts. Note that the account that we use to authenticate is important here. Whatever access level this authenticating user has on the Google Ads account that we want to access will be applied to the refresh token that gets generated by this flow. So for example, if the user I authenticate as has admin access to a given ads account, the refresh token I generate will also have admin access to the same ads account. Okay, after I click Allow, I can go back to my IDE and see that it's output a refresh token. What just happened is that the script opened a socket to receive an HTTP request from the Google Auth servers. That request contained an authorization code, which our script parsed and used to generate the refresh token we see here. Now that we have a refresh token, we can add that to our Google Ads config file which for Python is the googleads.yaml file.
Along with that refresh token, our config file needs those client ID and client secret values and a developer token. Having that set up will allow us to start making API calls with our client library, which uses those config values to handle a lot of the authentication logic for us. That concludes our episode on the Webflow with client libraries. I hope you found this episode useful in setting up your Google Ads API credentials. If you want updates on future episodes or other developer series we're putting together, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us on our support channels. Thanks for joining. Thank you.